Hello, Angelo. Stan Fabian. Yeah, look, I want uh, 50 across on Lady Gentry in the third, and I want $100 to show on Speedy Kid in the fifth. <laughs> okay, I'll call you later. Right. Got two hands, you know. Well, shake it up. Some horn happy creep just pulled in. Let him honk. If it isn't long shot Stan, how come you're not at the track on a nice quiet day like this? Playing a favorite. Why should I be? I got a sure thing right here. Ah, <laughs> uh, why don't you? Hi, Joni. What are you doing here? On my way to Chicago. Pick up a stack. Well, don't let me keep you. Hey, wait a minute. I'm thirsty. Dan, hand me the waffles, will you? Sure. <laughs> Something I can do for you? I just dropped in to see my sister. She work here? Yeah. Joan Daniel. You're not Frank, are you? That's right. Why don't you say so? I'm Stan Fabian. Well, glad to know I'm you. I'm glad to know you, too. Heard all about you. Oh, from Joni? Yeah. She uh, told us she was working for a very nice guy. Order, Stan. Okay. Some surprise, huh, honey? Yeah, Frank is full of surprises. <laughs> Always kidding, that kid. When'd you get in town? Just now. I feel like I'm still riding. Like something to drink? Okay. Root beer'd be fine. Right. How about something to eat? I had lunch in Santa Barbara. Tell me, how are all the folks up in Portland? Okay. Sounds like Johnny told you all about us. I uh, just gave him the whole rundown. 128 out of 5. Hey, are, honey. Plan on staying a while? No, I'm going on to Chicago. That is, if. If is right. If you think I'm going to give you any money for this crazy deal of yours, you're wasting your time. You talk too much, big mouth. What the? It's all right, Stan. I just want him to know how things stand. Well, just don't pop off in front of strangers. It's none of their business. I'm not exactly a stranger. Joni and I are pretty good friends. That's nice work if you can get it. And it looks like you are. You. Don't you think you're getting a little out of line? Okay, so I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said it. Why don't you give that mind of yours an airing? Ah, oh, that's all right, honey. I guess a brother's got a right to worry about his sister. Who cares? I can take care of myself. What do you say we all have dinner down at the barn tonight, okay? No, I don't want to barge in. You're not barging in. Be my guest. Ah, oh, come on, honey. You know the slogan of this place. Service with a smile. Let me see a smile on that pretty little kisser of yours. <laughs> Atta girl. Just a natural born umpire. Come on, Frank, we'll get you cleaned up. So by the time that I got out of the army, I was a pretty good cook. I had a couple of thousand dollars saved up, and I put it in the beehive. Kind of tough at first, Listen, doing all the Stan, cooking. Listen, Stan, can we talk about something else besides surviving? Get enough of that place wrestling trays all day. You wouldn't have to wrestle trays if you'd listen to reason. I mean, the kind of reason that goes on the third finger in the left hand. Doesn't sound like a bad proposition to me, Johnny. Not if I don't mind placing second to a horse. Made long shot, Stan. On top of the world today, and a hawk tomorrow. No, sir. When I get married, I want to have some security. I want a home and a family. The only ponies I want to hear about are the Shetlands for the kids. I'll quit tomorrow. I'll put it in writing. Where? On the back of a scratch sheet? <laughs> hey, Joni, better take it a little easy. Remember Who sent for you? Oh, come on, honey. Come on. Frank, tell me, this deal in Chicago takes a little capital, hmm? Oh, well, yeah. How much? 3,000. A mere bag of shells. 3,000, huh? Well, don't look at me. If you want to loan him the money, it's your funeral. Just don't blame me. Tell him what it's about. The big goose chase. All right, all right. There you go, spouting off again. Some umpire, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Stan. 
Sorry I lost up your evening. You couldn't last up our evening. Good evening. Like to finish this dance? That's the best idea I've heard tonight. Now, <laughs> well, that's a Daniel for you. Baseball drinkers. Three drinks and they're out. I think I better take her home. I want to go to the Rainbow Room. <laughs> oh, well. <sighs> Okay. I'll wait here. See you tomorrow, John. Who cares? Come on, Dan. Let's go to the Rainbow Room. Oh, okay, sweetheart. We'll go to the Rainbow Room. Come on. <laughs> I guess you can tell I'm pretty nuts about that kid, huh? Well, all I can say is keep punching, pal. Punching? I've been knocking myself out. I got a rule, you know, never fool around with any of the car hops. It's a business. And along comes Joni, and out goes the rule. <laughs> oh, boy, she's a real doll. All she ever wanted was work, nothing else. Yeah, she's all work and no play. Always has been that kid. She's out for one thing, security. Security? With some girls, that's a mink coat and a million dollars, and with others, it's... Three squares a day and a roof over your head. You figure it. Johnny, tell me about your deal. What deal? All right, don't get sore. Maybe she was loaded. Maybe she was making the whole thing up. Yeah, maybe she was. What did she tell you? No, oh, I don't know. Something about, uh... Some gold knickknacks that you liberated from some chateau while you're in the army. Oh, brother, what a few drinks will do. Are worth about uh, $200,000. What else did she tell you? Oh, well, that you had a partner, a buddy in Chicago that you were meeting on the first. Some imagination. That's why you needed the dough, because you and his partner were so supposed to each put up $3,000 to finance the trip. <laughs> well, that Johnny should be a writer. You know it's still there? I don't know anything. Suppose I'm willing to invest $3,000 to find out. Look, save your dough. That won't help you any with Joni. She'll wind up marrying you, all right. She may not show it, but she likes you a lot. Well, she's not the only reason that I'm interested. 200,000 bucks is a lot of scratch. Even half of it isn't bad. Look, the deal is between the other guy and me, just the two of us. So forget it, huh? Sleep on it, will you, Frank? I'll see you in the morning. Good night. All right. Who is it? Joni? Don. has it been? A million years. Seems longer to me. Thank heaven you're here. The coffee. You know, you do a mighty
mighty cute drunk. That was practically no act. How are we doing? I think we've got him hooked. I hope so. I don't know how much longer I can hold him off. Yeah, he certainly took his time uh, saying goodnight to you tonight. He takes his sweet time every night. That's the trouble. Yeah, you just keep sparring, money. He may be bigger than you are, but you've got the speed. Just thought I'd stop by and let you know how things were going. Tomorrow's our big day. It's gonna be a busy little beehive. Know any more about what we were talking about last night? Yeah, I have. You looked at a calendar lately? Haven't got much time left, have you? What's with Johnny this morning? It's half past nine already. Oh, she'll be here. Good old Ed. He's the best short order man there is. I had to give him a piece of the joint to keep him. Yeah? I'm sorry I'm late, Stan. Oh, that's all right, honey. How do you feel? Like my head stuck on with scotch <laughs> tape. <laughs> Why don't you take the day off? I'll be all right after I have a cup of coffee. Sure, okay. She works real hard, that kid. Always has, all her life. Maybe she deserves a break. Stan, how would you like to take Joni to Europe on your honeymoon? Are you kidding? No. She's always dreamed about traveling and uh, seeing the world. You know, she used to flip every time I'd tell her about some of the places I'd seen overseas. Well, I think she might go for the European trip, but uh, the honeymoon, uh... I don't know. Well, you can sell her once she knows you're in on the deal. What about your partner? Well, if he won't cut you in, I'll... I'll split my half with you. Tell you what I'll do. If Joni goes for it, you got a deal. But you gotta sell her. Well, if it ain't the queen bee, what brings you to the hive this morning? It's a great day for making honey, honey. Well, here I am. Where is everybody? Oh, they'll be back. Maybe I ought to take off the slacks and put on a bikini bathing suit. Yeah, if you did that, honey, we'd have to beat them off with a stick. Joni, how'd you like to take a little trip to Europe? With you? And Stan. I told you Frankie was full of surprises. What's the angle this time? Stan's in on the deal. You just can't resist a long shot, can you? Honey, I haven't said yes yet. Well, go ahead, Frankie. Tell us all about it. Well, you and Stan could make it a honeymoon. A honeymoon? Me and Stan? Listen, Cupid, what makes you think I'm ready for a honeymoon? Well, you're always talking about security. A hundred thousand bucks is a lot of security. How do you feel about it, Stan? You know the way I feel about you. You just say the word and we go. I'll tell you what. Suppose we start the honeymoon after we have the money. Miss Daniel, turn in your uniform. But what about the place? Who's going to run it? Ed can run it with his brother Andy and a couple of car hops. I still don't know. Come on. What do you say, honey? Shall I go down and get us our passport? I don't know. You're coming at me awful fast. What do you say, honey? <laughs> Stan. Come, sweetheart. Come on, wake up. You gotta make a good impression on your brother's buddy. Okay? Ray, my kid sister Joni and her husband to be Stan Fabian. Ray Torres. I don't uh, get this. Well, I'll explain everything. Come on, get in. I think we ought to have a little talk first. Well, we'll talk on the way. Come on, let's go. Where to? Tell him, Ray. Straight ahead to the outer drive. 
So Stan here offered to put up my end of the dough and make it a honeymoon for him and Joni. That wasn't our deal. You know that. Yeah, but I figured, uh, you know, something should come up that we needed more dough. Stan could put it up for both of us. It's worth it just for the insurance. I don't need insurance. Okay, so I'll cut him in for half of mine. You ain't cutting him in on nothing. Where do you get off telling him about this in the first place? This was a two-way deal just between you and me. You've got a lot of guts trying to cut your family in. Now, wait a minute. If I'm willing to split my half with Stan, that's no skin off you. It's going to be the way we set it up, or nothing. What do you mean, or nothing? I go single O. That isn't uh, very practical under the circumstances. Under what circumstances? Well, you see, there are several of us that know about this now. Yeah, I can take care of that, too. All right, chum, take me back to the hotel. What was that? My silencer. Keep driving. Are you nuts? Shut up. All right, pull over to the side. Frank, Slow down. Done? Shut up. Slow down. Do you want a cop on her tail? I didn't figure on anything like this. Kill you killed him. Now pull yourself together. You didn't give me any choice. Now, all in the family. Where are we? Ohio, someplace. Looks like a town up there ahead. Why don't we stop? Joni's all knocked out. The further we get from Chicago, the better. Here's an early morning bullet. The body of Ramon Torrey, Chicago used car salesman, was found floating in Lake Michigan outside of Chicago early this morning. Police are looking for two men and a girl in a light-colored convertible, which is believed to be the killer's car. Police ruled out robbery as the motive for the crime, when they discovered $3,200 in the victim's wallet. Lionel Boyd, clerk of the Monarch Hotel. What are we gonna do? Just take it easy. One thing, they haven't got the make of the car. I don't like that two men and a girl business. Maybe we ought to split up. Yeah, you take a plane to New York. Joni and I will meet you there. Good idea. Maybe we do it the other way. You take the plane. Joni goes with me. I wanna go with Stan. We do it my way. If we're picked up, we're brother and sister, legit. I want to go home. Nobody's going back home. We're all in this together. These suckers not to go through with it now. It's over 100,000 apiece. Frank, he's right. Honey, we'd be suckers to quit now. Everything's going to be all right. There's a gas station. Why don't you pull up? I'll take a cab to the airport. Bring the rest of the stuff with us. Better give me some dough for expenses. And when you get to New York, check into the Caxton Hotel and wait for us. We'll get there as fast as we can. It's 200. I'll do it. Remember, the Caxton Hotel on West 39th Street. Bye, Doc. Please wait for us, Dan. Wait for us, Dan. Take it easy, darling. Don't overdo it. That was quite a shock to Stan. Mm, wait till he gets the big shock. <sighs> Two boat tickets. Bail from the Monarch Hotel, paid in full. A passport. And 3,200 smackaroos. Sure ate to part with all that scratch, Mr. Jackson. It uh, felt kind of good just carrying it around, you know? Well, you keep it then, Ray. Mr. Atherton would want you to for doing such a good job. Oh, well, thank him for me. That's wonderful. You can send them in now, Miss Swanson. Before you go, there's a good friend of yours here who would like to say hello. Frank! <laughs> Hiya, Ray. How do you feel? Well, if you'd waited till we got a few yards down the road, I wouldn't have had to take that bath. I couldn't see the water. Oh, sure. <laughs> anyway, it was Saturday night. At these prices, I'd get waterlogged. Don't forget now, for the time being, stay out of New York and Frankfurt, Germany. 
Don't worry about it. I'm going to Vegas. <laughs> By the way, how'd our shortwave broadcast come through? Oh, he got the message. He couldn't wait to take off for New York. So far, everything's going right on schedule. Well, let's hope it continues. We're close to the end now, and Mr. Atherton is getting very anxious. How about you, Miss Morrow? Everything all right? Now that Frank's into it, I feel much safer. This past year hasn't been too easy. I can imagine. Yeah, without her, we never would have made it. She's got him to a point now where he'll do almost anything she asks him to. That remains to be seen, Frank. Yes, Jackson? Well, we're ready now, Mr. Atherton. Fine. Bring him in. Mr. Derling will be along any moment now, gentlemen. I'll have him fill you in on the background. Derling's been on this case for a long time. He knows every aspect of it. Joni, wonderful. Frank. RV, good to see Frank. you again. Frank, you, you know the boys. Hi, boys. This is Herr Koenig, Frank. Just arrived from Berlin. Herr Koenig? Say long in him. Miss Morrow and my attorney, Tom Jackson. Herr Koenig of the German police. Now, I want you to tell them the story. Mr. Derling here, gentlemen, was an eyewitness. The uh, whole picture, sir? From beginning to end. I want all of you men to have every single detail on this case. If the boys here know what we're working for, it'll help them do a better job. Yes, sir. Well, gentlemen, our story goes back to November 6th, 1945, after the occupation of Berlin. The division quartermaster received a tip that there was a quantity of stolen supplies in a bombed-out bakery near Neustadt. He notified battalion headquarters, and they sent an MP lieutenant Mr. Atherton's son, with a detail of us to investigate. It didn't look like anything was alive in the whole town. MPs! All right, get moving. Get everything you can hold on to go out the back way. I'll keep them off. It was a one-man operation. Colonel Reichel had been assigned to the case. He established that the bullet had been fired from an M1 rifle. But more important, when Reichel discovered powder burns around the wound, he concluded that the dead GI had been shot from behind and at close range. A thorough investigation was ordered. Several arrests were made, but all suspects were finally released. Apparently, up a blind alley, a new strategy was decided upon to uncover the killer, the man they called Packrat. All weapons in the outfit were ordered to be turned in for survey and new ones issued. Then, each of these weapons were fired into a ballistics recovery box. Each bullet was carefully retrieved from the cotton and tagged with the number of the weapon that had fired it. The slugs were flown to the States for ballistics tests. It was a long, painstaking operation. They hoped to find the bullet of Killer Packrat among the first tests. Finally, after two weeks, Operation Haystack was over. Rifle number M126891 was issued to Fabian Stanley E., Sergeant, Cook, 189, 4th Battalion. They were all set to lower the boom when they got a bad break. Packrat Stan had been returned to the States and honorably discharged. The Army was powerless to prosecute him for his crime. That's the story, gentlemen. For 10 years, we've been planning and waiting for the right moment to move. Now it's here. Last year, Miss Morrow succeeded in getting a job working for this Fabian fellow. She has his complete confidence. Now Frank, who has been planning everything, has moved in. 
The rest is up to you. Each one of you will be thoroughly briefed on the part that you're going to play. Any questions, gentlemen? Herr Koenig, you got any problems? Problem? No problem. All you got to do is bring this fellow Fabian to Germany and give us the proof we must have. The Deutsche Polizei will do the rest. No problems. All right, then. Let's get to work. Mr. Jackson? This way, gentlemen. And good luck to you all. Tony, you, you've done a remarkable job. Won't be long now. You too, Frank. And you know, after this is over with, I, uh, I have some plans for you too that I think you're going to like. We have a few plans of our own. <laughs> well, that's fine, but don't forget, the honeymoon's on me. Now, Frank, I, I've arranged to take over the Von Reimer estate in uh, Frankfurt on the 18th of this month. We'll have a 90-day lease. Oh, that'll be plenty. I've also arranged with my bank for you to have unlimited funds. Anything you need will be at your disposal. Well, well, thank you. Well, that's it, I guess. But you know, after we've finished with this, it still won't bring back my son to me, will it? He meant a great deal to me. All this, everything I own, everything I possess, was for my son. Well, Godspeed, both of you. We'll do our best, Harvey. get here so fast? We left the car in Akron and took a plane. You did one? We got stopped in Toledo and again in Cleveland. Yeah, I figured the crate was getting too hot. I wish you the cop could hear my heart pounding. I was so scared. Never should have let you out of my sight. I'm all right now. And look how much sooner we're together. That's the best reason for my money. Well, come on, come on. Let's get squared away. You've got plenty of time for that. Oh, Frank, relax. Now, look, there's a freighter leaving Thursday for England. We can get on it. A freighter? I thought we were going on something like the Queen Mary or the Ile de France. Oh, honey, I don't like it too much either, but you just wait until we get our hands on that big dough. I promise you we'll come back on the biggest tub of float. <laughs> and first class. Not bad for a freighter, huh? Yeah, I had pictured freight all over the place. And I pictured myself rooming with a tractor or something. I never knew an ocean voyage could be so relaxing. Why, Slim Durling! <laughs> you got me mixed up with somebody else. Always the clown, huh? Say, who do you think's meeting me over in England? Doc Mason and Charlie Holt. Boy, what a small boat. Look, fella, you've got me mixed up with somebody. Oh, come off the rib, Slim Durling. I'd know that face of yours if I saw it in a bear cave. Yeah, well, maybe so, but I don't know yours. Hey, what's the matter with you, Slim? We spent two years together in the same outfit. Angelo, Salerno. <laughs> hey, remember Maria? Salerno, huh? Look, fella, I'm Frank Daniel, and you're becoming a pest. Well, if, uh, if you're not Slim Durling... Uh... I'll take one of those. Oh, uh, the wife, huh? This happens to be my sister. And if you ever run into that friend of yours, tell him I'm sorry for him if he looks like Frank. Well, I, uh, I guess I could be wrong, but, uh, never saw anything like it. Oh, this happens to me all the time. I've been taken for everybody from Cary Grant to Gandhi. You should only look like Cary Grant. And I don't see why you got so annoyed. You practically insulted the man. What am I supposed to do? Stand there and start yakking with the guy? 
This is no time to start conversation. How about a turn around the deck? I want to stay here and get some sun. Stan? Ha uh ha, -huh, no. I want to stay right here. See you later. You better say that. Toot your horn, Stan. I could use some curb service. Good idea, baby. I want to see him wait on you. Some penny any poker game. Hey, Slim. Slim, look, don't you remember Maria? Salerno. Stay away from me, will you? <laughs> oh, I hate to do that to the poor guy. He's going out of his mind. Every time he sees me, he makes a beeline for the bar again. Hey, Slim, what about Maria? What about Salerno? That was another case. A case of what? Battle fatigue. Tell me about it. <laughs> oh. You leave me alone. I got a right to talk to anybody I want to, see? I always said you talk too much. The next time you open your yap, I'll... Oh. You keep your hands off her. Jam us up with that mouth of hers. Coming out of the bar, and here she is yakking with some old dame, telling her we're going to Frankfurt, Germany, to pick up an inheritance. Name and places, putting on the dog. You just keep your hands off her, you understand? And you gotta be careful about talking to people, huh? Might I take you down to your cabin? I'll be all right. Why don't you go back to your game? Oh, that game is all over. I didn't want to play anymore, so we cut high card for the whole works. 60 cents. Take care of your jaw, Frankie. Yeah. girls and their makeup and stuff. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> what happened to your hair? Never mind, no cracks, huh? <laughs> hey, boy, you got fat. Well, what are you gonna do, you know? <laughs> Let's go, huh? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want you fellas to see who's on this boat. Well, someone we know? Someone we know. Slim Durling. You're no kidding. kidding. It's a doggone thing I ever saw. He insists he isn't Slim. I'm telling you, the guy drove me crazy. Maybe he just looks like Slim. Oh, no, it is Slim. He's traveling with his sister and her boyfriend. He doesn't have a sister. I spent a weekend with his family just before we went overseas. OK, OK, OK. We'll wait till he gets off, and then you tell me if it's Slim or not. Oh, why do we have to be the last ones off? She'll be here. Where is he? He'll be down in a minute. Not me. Don Gillen. Yeah, I'm Gillen. Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard, what is it? You'll come to me to the customs office, please. Customs? What I was the worst to question you, sir. Can you gentlemen identify Mr. Gillen? Oh, sure we can. Well, this is a fine how do you do. Oh, don't right worry here. about it, Don. We'll find out what this is all about. I left my robe out and I had to repack everything. <laughs> well, let's go, shall we? Will you have the bags taken up as soon as they come in, please? All right, what's the next move? Well, the first thing we ought to do is buy a car. I mean, buy a car? You're pretty sporty with my dough. What's the matter with the rental? Well, why rent one? We can buy one so cheap. Besides, we're going to need it. 
Come on, I'll show you. Wait a minute. Are we going upstairs, Bruce? I'd, I'd like to freshen up. Oh, we can freshen up later. There's a car lot right down the street. They have all kinds of them cheap. Come on. Aren't you even going to send a cable to Ed and let him know where you're staying? Sure, sure. Just as soon as we uh, see the sights. time I drove over this whole road. Can you speed it up a little? You got the whole highway to yourself. Oh, going slow on this baby's a habit with me. I can still remember during the war. Mind every inch of the way you had to go slow. Cut out the war stories, will you? How far is it to this von Reimer estate? Relax, we're almost there. Uh, did you ever see any action, Stan? Yeah, I saw a lot of action. I'm a big hero. Now, will you get us to this place and stop the talking? And I second the motion. We ought to be there by now, shouldn't we? We're here. steady. I don't like this. It's like robbing a grave. This is a special kind of a grave. Hear that? Hold this. Somebody's coming. Help me. Help me. Help me. Come on. Help, help me. Come on. Come on. Cover it up. Cover it up. Put that away. Put it away. Help me. What are you doing here? Oh, we're uh, tourists, Americanish. Uh, Meine Frau is uh, interested in, in writings on tombstones. It, it's a hobby. Verboten. The Verheimer estate is open to the public only in the day. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we didn't know. <laughs> I guess we'd better go. Huh? Well, good night. I'm ashamed to listen to schnüffel here. Oh, it gets you very sad. That 
was close. Is this really gold? Solid. Say, uh, you came up with a little surprise yourself tonight, Stan, with that gun. I don't like guns. How do we get that box? Don't worry, we'll get it. This is just a preview. I'm for going in and letting those guards have it. Well, we knock off one of those guys and we never would make the frontier. Just let me handle this. We've got plenty of time. Besides, we've got to have this stuff melted down yet. You got a man to do the casting? Yeah, an old guy named Schmidt. He's got a little foundry over on the Boomerstrasse. He used to cast gold monkey wrenches for refugees. Take a run out there tomorrow. Looks good, eh? Perfect. Solid gold. Maybe some of the paint chips off this. Won't the gold show through? Oh, not paint. Lead. Makes it look like steel, no? How much? 200 marks. No, no, no. I mean for the whole thing. 200 pounds, maybe more. 5,000 marks? 5,000? We we'll give you 750. 750? Du bist verrückt, impossible. 750 American dollars. 800 for no questions. It's a deal. When will you bring it? A couple of days. Thank you very much. Oh, no, no, no. Not finished yet. And now I must age it. And now I age it. Where did you dig him up? <laughs> oh, I go way back with him. Besides casting gold monkey wrenches for refugees, he used to have another racket. Casting phony medals for GIs. Anything from a Purple Heart to a DSC. Uh, he helped many a guy click with a dame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he used to turn out a pretty good half-buck piece, too, until they finally put the heat on him. You gonna take another crack at that box tonight? Oh, I think we'd better give it a breather. If those guards spot us again, they might get a little uh, suspicious. I still think we ought to barge right in. Wait a minute. I've got it. Those guards must have a night off. We can find out when. Then we go out there and tell the new guards that we're a couple of occupation authorities on a security checkup, give them some official fast lip, and they give us the run of the place. Uh-huh. It'll work. Frank, will you step on it? I promised Joni I'd take her to Bad Norheim for a swim. Oh, she'll like it out there. It's pretty nice. Well, as a matter of fact, I think I'd like to go for a swim myself. Johnny. Hi, Stan. I've been looking for you. How'd things go today? Oh, fine. Fine. You know, after this, I never could go back to the Beehive again. There's something wrong, Stan. What is it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I can't figure Frank. What's to figure? We could have gotten that box last night easy. Sure, until those men came along. Lucky they didn't find out what we were after. You've just got to have patience. I got all the patience in the world. Then what's bothering you? It doesn't add up. Frank's a guy that he dives in and he gets things done. Remember Chicago? Wish I could forget it. Well, last night when I wanted to handle those guys, suddenly he chickened out. I still don't know what you're driving at. Well, I'll tell you. I don't think he wanted to get that box last night. Why? Why not? I'm thinking that he's got an idea that he can get it without us. 
Maybe we'll beat him to it. Oh, boy, is that ever terrific! How about a dip, Joni? Oh, that's cold! Be my guest to a case oh. of pneumonia. <laughs> It'll be warm as soon as you get in. You go on, darling. I'll sit this out. Okay. Careful! Ah. Now you need a periscope to see us. I've got a flash for you. My boy's getting ready to throw you a sharp curve. Oh. I wondered when he'd get around to that. He thinks you might be figuring on the same thing. Did he say uh, when he plans to pull this? You came up before you had a chance to. Uh, one up by land, two up by sea. How did it go at the foundry? That stuff in the box certainly looked real. Is it? Courtesy of Richard B. Atherton. Listen, I've got to go see Keenick. Can you take care of uh, Stan for the rest of the day? I don't know. It was quite a tussle last night. He's practically at the knocking me in the head stage. Remember what I told you. Just keep sparring. He may be bigger, but you've got the speed. He's either getting faster or I'm getting slower. One of these nights, I may have to hang up my gloves. They don't talk like that. Not even kidding. What's going on here? A couple of beach athletes kicked sand in her eye. Jerks. How's it now? All right. Guess your eyes are just too big, dollface. <laughs> Don't he say the sweetest things? <laughs> How about getting dressed and starting back? I'm not yet. Well, we've got to find out what night those guys are off. I don't want to go now, Stan. Gee, I'm just beginning to enjoy it here. Can't Frankie go by himself? Maybe it'd be better if you went on alone, Frankie. Joni and I'll join you later. Well, all right. I'll grab the auto rail back to Frankfurt. I'll meet you tonight, and we'll all have dinner together. Why don't you make it after dinner? Joni and I'll eat on the way in. Want to try one of those beer gardens we passed. It's so, uh, picturesque. <laughs> OK. Have fun. Now, you be sure and wait for us, Frankie. This is the life, huh, hon? Sure beats car hopping by a long shot. Yeah, no more pounding the hot pavements for my girl. Makes me warm just thinking about it. I think I'll take that swim now. It can't be here, Katie. Everything depends on it, the success of our whole plan. How is about, uh... Sure, sure, help yourself. But it's true, as I told you. And nothing we can do about it. Already the American Air Force has taken over the von Reimer estate. And tomorrow, there will be a guard all around the place. You know, alles verboten. There must be a way, some way to beat this. Setz dich nieder, mein Herr. Remember, the best laid plans of mice and men go away sometimes. By whom? Poet Robert Burns, English. Scotch. Oh, yeah, großartig. <laughs> but there's also some good news, too. I have the badge for you. See? Deutsche Geheime Kriminalpolizei. Secret Police of Germany. <laughs> Wunderbar, was? <laughs> that will get you in where you are not supposed to be and out too. Thanks, Herr Koenig. Oh, don't take it so hard. Everything will be fine. You will think of something. Yeah. No, thanks. Oh. Prost! It's gonna be a great night. Great night. Sure, great. Why are we driving so slow? We'll be late to meet Frank. Well, that's uh, kind of the idea. <laughs> it's gonna be a great night for Grave Robber. What do you mean? Oh, baby, it's all there just waiting for us. I could never help you lift that box. 
Baby, you don't have to lift a finger. And another thing. Like you said, Frank could have the same idea. Maybe I ought to phone him and make sure he's at the hotel. Good girl. Hotel Frederick? Tell Daniel, please, 402. This is his sister. It's very important. You've got to connect me, please. Please, I don't understand. Please speak English. I think he said Frank isn't in. Yes, right. Hello. I want to speak to her, Daniel. Is he in? Okay, thank you. Well, he says he doesn't want to be disturbed and orders our orders. I guess maybe he's doing a little entertaining. Right. At least we know where he is. I'm scared to death, Stan. Oh, come on, honey, settle down. This is perfect timing, I tell you. Well, what if those men out there see us? They're sure to find out what we're after. I got the answer to that one, too. Such a gamble. Well, like you always say, meet long shot Stan. Stan. Nice night for it, isn't it? Frank, please. Shut up, Joni. Put out that light. I just go right ahead with what you were doing. You keep on digging, and Joni keeps holding the bag. Kind of funny, isn't it? Joni holding the bag. Keep on digging the... Someone's coming. Oh, give me that. Look! Come on, let's get out of here. Back to the car, quick! Come on! Hold it, Stan. You drive. I'll get in the back. Looks like some of them have been turning around in their graves, huh? <laughs> Come on. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you get it over with? Don't give me any ideas. Now, coming out here tonight was my idea. Stan didn't want any part of it. I made him do it. Oh, don't be so noble. Nobody's being noble. And while we're on it, what were you doing out there, taking the air? I was just playing a hunch. You never had a right hunch in your life. Just don't take it out on Stan. He's been on the level all the way. Is she telling the truth, Stan? You heard her. Mm, that kind of changes the picture. 
But don't blame Joni. Frank, she's a kid that never had anything. You know that better than anybody else. She saw that stuff in the box and it, it threw her. You don't have to alibi for me. I'm not alibying for you, honey. I'm just trying to make Frank see how a thing like that could happen. Okay, okay. If that's the way it is, I'll buy it. No more funny stuff, understand? Okay, Frank. Well, I'll forget it ever happened, huh? You want to know something, Johnny? You were right. I did have the same idea. So it runs in the family. Now, that's the way it ought to be with a brother and sister. Johnny? Yes? Am I ready to go? In a minute. Okay, I'll meet you down in the lobby. All right. Frank? How do you feel? Oh, pretty good. Think I'll be a little better after I get something to eat. What about you? Great. Be with you in a minute. Okay. You tell me that those guards are going to be off on Friday night? Yeah, two other guys are replacing them. Uh, Joni, about ready? Schmitz to have him make up some phony official badge, and, and he had that. Uh, he's making one up for you, too. I don't know if it looks like the McCoy or not, but it'll do to flash on those guards. Now, look, when we get out there Friday night, uh, we just tell the new guys we're on a security check, see? And if they uh, hang around, we just tell them to blow. Simple? That sounds all right. Well, we can take the stuff out right in front of them if we have to. Brother, we're home. Am I worried? And if they do give us any trouble, we just uh, let them have it. OK. I got to go. I told Johnny I'd meet her downstairs. Uh, wait for me. I won't be long. to anyone who would kiss and run away. Oh, don't always chime, my love. Come back to my arms. Well, if you can hear her from here, you got better ears than I have. <laughs> you know, this place hasn't changed a bit. Same smoke, same noise, same beat, only different faces. <laughs> Did I say faces? I'm smart, Mom. Let's get out of here. Huh? Let's not go now. It's so colorful. Yeah, it's sickly yellow. Well, wait till she finishes her song. A love you can call your own. We'll carry you through. We'll watch over you. And I like will entwine my love someday. Mm. Excuse me, what? You'll be my, my be right back. Love. So whatever you do. Don't look now, Frank. There's a soldier sitting behind us that's been staring at you ever since we came in. To your heart. Look, Jack. Wait a minute. Hi! 
Hey, Jake! Frankie! Well, I'm a son of a gun. Are you still here? You know, I thought this joint felt bothered. <laughs> what are you doing in Frankfurt? Oh, strictly a tourist this time. Still living off the taxpayers, huh? What else? <laughs> Come on, I want you to meet the family. The family? You didn't take the dive, did you? No, no, no. <laughs> Joni, I want you to meet a page out of my past. Mike Jankowitz. My kid sister, Joni. You remember me telling you about her? Well, uh, ten years is a long time ago. Mm. How are you, Miss, uh... Daniel. Daniel? <laughs> well, sit down, you big bug. Say, uh, you must be pretty handy with the German now, huh? Yeah, old but lousy. Oh, this is Stan Fabian. Stan, shake hands with Jank. Hi, Dave. Hi, Stan. Sit down, sir. sir. Well, tell me, Jank, what, uh, what are you doing now? Well, I've got the Rhine Main Reenlistment Office at headquarters. Reenlistment? Oh, leave it to that boy Jank to get a soft touch. Well, you look like you're doing all right yourself, taking in Europe as a tourist. Oh, strictly as a guest. You see, Stan and Joni are getting married, and, and I'm a witness. All expenses paid. Ham sandwich at the banquet, huh? That's right. <laughs> well, listen, what, uh, what does that guy do for excitement around here, huh? Well, you certainly come to the right party. Young man, let me point out a few of the benefits of uh, re-enlisting. Uh -huh. Strictly as a civilian, bud. Well, there goes my commission. <laughs> well, I better be getting back to the table before the floor line thinks I'm sticking with the tab. Yeah. See you later? No. I nice knew you was a big apple knocker. <laughs> yes, plenty of good old touches to cut up, huh? Oh, a million of them. See you later? Right. right. Oh, what a character, that guy. You know, if we'd have had a couple of thousand more like him, we'd have lost the war. <laughs> Honestly, that guy has more angles for turning a fast buck. Uh-huh, <laughs> fine. Uh, can we go? Yeah. Come on. It is a perfect duplication. You will notice I polished the edges to take off the newness. Herr Schmidt, you're a real artist. Yeah, that looks real, all right. How much? Oh, it is very risky. No, oh, never mind the build-up. How much? 400 marks. OK. Thanks. <clears throat> now, these are the tools from the car we bought. Simke, eh? I will have the molds ready when you get here. Well, we may bring it uh, late tonight. Is that all right? Oh, at night is better. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Now, the guards hang out in this tech room in the stable back of the chateau. We we'll just walk in, flash our badges, and uh, tell them we're investigating a black market operation. Suppose they follow us to the cemetery. Well, we'll just tell them to scram. And suppose they don't? Then, I follow your suggestion. What's with this fence? We on the right road? Sure we are. Wait a minute. I don't get it. This can't be the right road. Well, there's only the one road. What do you suppose it means? Maybe, maybe it's just temporary. Sit tight and I'll find out. Isn't this the uh, Von Reimer estate? Yes, sir. This fence is something new, isn't it? Yes, sir. The Air Force has taken the place over as an experimental base. Oh. When, when did that happen? Since last Wednesday, sir. Any uh, chance of, you know, going through the place? We're Americans. Sorry, sir. Not unless you get a permit signed by the commanding officer in Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. But I doubt if you'll get one, sir. Well, thanks. Thanks very much. Genius, got an answer for that one? Don't worry, we'll get in there somewhere. Well, I can get our brains splattered all over the graveyard. A lot of good that's gonna do us. Look, I know we're in a tight squeeze, but I'm not giving up, not by a long shot. 
you invested. Ten long years I've been sweating this thing out. I'm going to get that stuff, and nothing's going to stop me. Nothing. How about Joni? How's she going to take us? Well, we just don't tell her. Say we went out there, and the same guys were on duty. They, they never changed the guards. We'll go out there tomorrow and take a look at the layout. I'll come up with some idea. I'm sick of your ideas. I gotta get my hands on that box. Everything depends on it. Everything. What's the matter, Stan? The way you're acting, you'd think the whole thing was a flop. If the cards aren't off this week, they'll be off next. Frank will have the information. Yeah, I'm just, uh... I'm just a little anxious, honey, that's all. It isn't as if we didn't know the gold was there. We saw it. What a lovely place for a honeymoon. Look. Picturesque. <laughs> Bad Gastine. <laughs> what a name. Yeah. Here's Frank, honey. Well? Good news, but I'm afraid it's going to take a little time. First of all, you couldn't get into that place if you were Eisenhower. What do you mean? Honey, I didn't want to tell you, but the Air Force has taken over the Von Reimer estate. They put a wire fence around that like it was a POW camp. Oh, no. There you go. They're putting up a lot of barracks and stuff, but uh, so far they haven't gotten into the cemetery at all. All right, now what's the good news? Well, I got an idea on the way back. Remember my friend Jankowitz, the sergeant we met at Putsy's? You mean you let him in on it? Let him in on nothing. Remember he was kidding us about that reenlistment pitch? Well, I found out they're doing some ground experiments on saber jet turbines out there. Well, I worked on turbines at North American in L.A. last year. With Jank being in recruiting and with him knowing that uh, I want to stay over here for a while, it wouldn't throw him too much if, if I told him I wanted to enlist in the Air Force again. You think he could get you assigned to this new base? Well, with my experience on the Sabre and Jank's drag, I think of a cinch. How are you going to get the stuff out? Well, smuggle it out a couple of pieces at a time. Shouldn't take too long. Frank, maybe you got something. What do you do, Frankie? Stay in the Army? Are you kidding? Once I've liberated this stuff, it's over the hill and onto the Riviera. That's desertion. Oh, isn't that terrible? And after what happened in Chicago. <laughs> Don't have to worry about Frank, baby. I'll go up and see Jake this afternoon. You better go with me, Stan. I, I might need a witness for identification or something. Why should we wait till this afternoon? Why don't we go now? Right. Why, honey? Isn't this a little beyond the call of duty? Don't worry. I've got it all figured out. Sure one for the books, Frank. Well, Joni decided she wanted to go home after the wedding, and Stan here with the ring in his nose says, OK. <laughs> so I figured, uh, what's wrong with signing for Hitch and letting Uncle Sam pay the freight? They uh, still give guys leave, don't they? Why, sure. And having connections with the right people, you can always wangle a little extra. That's what I figured, Sarge. Sign right there, Frank. OK. Well, Stan, see you in three years. Well, all you got to do now is take a physical, Raise your right hand and you're in. Come on. Well, strip down to the waist. I'll be back in a few minutes. I uh, noticed they made an experimental base out of the old Von Reimer estate out there. Yeah, I just set it up a few days ago. You know, Jank, uh, that'd be pretty good duty out there. Oh, I don't claim to be an aeronautical engineer, but uh, I do know what makes the little wheels go around, and uh, I've had some experience on turbos, too. You probably could use a guy like you. Might even get you rating. Hey. <laughs> oh, Doc, I got a live one for you. Oh, hiya, Doc. Hiya. Well, Jank, you got your quarter for the week, I see. No trouble at all, sir. He just walked in here all by himself. Doesn't look as though there's anything wrong with you. Have a chair. Kind of brings back memories. You know, if I wasn't getting married, I'd... Oh, we've got married men in the service, too. Blood pressure normal. He doesn't know Joni. <laughs> She'd wrap a propeller around his skull. 
Take a deep breath. I don't know. <laughs> Once again. Is there anything wrong, Doc? I'm afraid you're not going to make it, young man. What do you mean? I go easy, Doc, as long as he can walk, you know. You've got a pronounced heart murmur. Doc, I've never had anything wrong with me in my life. Have you had a cardiogram taken recently? No, but there's nothing to worry about. There's lots of people walking around with heart murmurs. But as for getting in the armed services, no medical examiner will ever pass you. I'm sorry, Mr. Daniel. You want to protect it, don't you? About the money I spent, forget it. I'm not enlisting. Oh, it's all right if I go ahead and enlist. But with you, it's different, huh? I said forget it. Is that you, Frankie? Don't you suggest it in front of Joni. Wait till you see what I bought. Is there something wrong? I didn't pass the physical. You didn't what? He's got a bad heart. But you never told us about it. I never knew it myself. Looks like the show's over, Joni. But it can't be. I'm afraid it is. But it doesn't have to be. What's the matter with you enlisting? Well, why not? Is there something wrong with you, too? It wouldn't work out, honey. Even if I signed up, I couldn't get stationed out there. I don't know anything about jets or turbines. But you were a cook in the army. They still eat, don't they? It wouldn't work. But you could try, Stan, couldn't you? Joni, Stan just doesn't want to enlist. He doesn't want to. Why not, Stan? Don't press me, honey, will you? I got reasons. You've got reasons. What kind of reason? Joni, there's no sense arguing. Oh, yes, there is. He's got reasons not to do it. What's the matter with the reason to do it? Me! Honey, we'd better call it a day. There's... We've hit too many rocks. The whole deal is jinxed. It just... It just isn't supposed to be. Oh, it isn't, huh? I told you from the start this was nothing but a goose chase, and I didn't want any part of it. You're the jinx, Frank. You've always been the jinx, and now it's caught up with you. Oh, Joni, please. You and your honeymoon. We were going back on the best tub afloat. Well, I've got plans now. And all I want from you is my ticket back home. And I'm sailing alone. Joni! Joni! Joni, I want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Just give me my ticket. I want to go home. Honey, you'll get home all right and with me. Things are going to be all right. And you'll have your security, I promise you. You promise? You promise what? A life in that hash house? Jumping in auto horns, hearing you say everything's going to be all right, baby? What about my honeymoon? What about my security? Shut up, Joni. No matter how you talk, I'm not going to enlist. Honey, you know that I'm not so much. I'd do anything for you, anything in the world. You know that. If you really loved me... Oh, Joni... Don't touch me. I thought you had class. Why, you're nothing. You're wrong. You're wrong, baby. I'm something. I'm going to tell you something. Nobody knows this. When I was in that army, I killed a couple of guys. One of them was an MP officer. That's why I can't enlist. If I go back in, they'll nab me for good. We've waited 10 years to hear you say that, Stan. 10 long years. All right, Herr Koenig, you can take him now. Confession is good for the soul, Herr Fabian, eh? Deutsche Kriminalpolizei. You're under arrest for the murder of Lieutenant Atherton. You know something? If you had enlisted, they couldn't have touched you. Abführen.
I guess I had it coming. This is a beautiful tray, Mr. Atherton. Looks like steel, no? Solid gold. It's a souvenir wedding present to both of you. Ah, <laughs> Johnny's my wedding present. Isn't she beautiful? Yeah. Like, uh, like the Lady of the Lake by the writer Walter Scott. English. Scotch. Scotch. Wunderbar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To the bride and to the groom. Hoch sollen sie leben. <laughs>